All right, we're gonna look at some shotgun powders. Um, one thing about shotgun powders is that there's a ton of them out there. You're gonna have to look at load data. You can look at several manuals, such as the Lyman book. You can look at all that stuff and you can decide for yourself what, uh, what manual you wanna use and then you can look at powders and I'd probably try to narrow it down to something that's locally available. You know, I like Hodgson powders, Hodgson or Winchester or uh, IMR. They don't make this particular powder anymore. It's gone to the powder graveyard. There's just a little bit left. It used to be a real favorite of mine. But uh, anyways, that's enough little chit chat talk. Uh, about powders is they're separated in by burn rate. What I mean by burn rate, back to the Lyman book, uh, you can see this chart right here. And this chart has a list of burn rates. It's only got 134 powders listed. But if you look, if you go online, uh, some of the powders that are in this book are obsolete. If you go online, you can print out this little chart this little handy chart off of uh, Hodgson's website, and there's over 150 powders listed on it. So um, that's a handy thing to have. What does burn rate mean? Well, burn rate is uh, how fast the powder burns and how versus how slow the powder burns. There's single base powders and double base powders, and that has to do with fast and slow. I've mentioned that hot weather and cold weather messes with them. So let's look at some of those, some of those things. Uh, a faster burn rate powder, if you look at the chart, a faster burn rated powder is gonna be listed, obviously number one, slower. They're listed from the fastest to the slowest, but this is only an approximate burn rate. It's not, uh, permanent. So, um, with this book being having 134 in it and that chart having 150 on it, like I said, this powder's discontinued, so something had to take its place. In this book, it's listed as number 37, but on that chart, it's not listed as number 37 because it's not in production anymore. So, they're going to change relatively in small increments. Uh, so if you're wondering what I'm looking at, uh, whenever I look to the right, I've got a monitor up there so I can see my face. Um, I try to keep this thing in focus. Trying a new camera out today. So hopefully this is gonna be a whole lot clearer and we won't have a fade in and out, all that kind of stuff. Um, depending on what you're wanting to load, it's gonna depend on what, you're, what kind of powder you're going for. Target loads. 7 8 ounce, 1 ounce, target loads. I'm talking about clays. Uh, you know, whether you're shooting sporting clays, whether you're shooting skeet, whether you're shooting trap, you're going to want like a fast burn rate powder that uh, is working fairly good uh, for you. Faster burn rate powders are going to be cleaner. Slower burn rate powders are going to leave a little bit of debris, a little bit more debris in the barrel. It, it just matters uh, about weather for some of that. But uh, one other book that I use is uh, for some of the information in it is this Advantages Manual from Ballistic Products. They're pretty good. I'd pick one up. Uh, while I'm on that, um, I mentioned the Rio hulls in my hull video and got a copy of the Rio manual. Let me show you what I found. This was kind of a was a fun thing for me. I sent this picture to Ballistic Products uh, a while back, and there you are. My picture that I sent to them probably five years ago. Made the manual, and I still stand beside my behind my statement. I, I do like the Remington hulls that I can get from uh, various places, um, but as far as being able to diversify and color code and stuff like that, I do like the Rio hulls. So 
um, your your faster burn rate powders. Uh, super handicap is a uh, let's see what number is it on this list according to uh, Lyman. Uh, let's look here. Not seeing it on here. Maybe it's in this book. Hang on, guys. Kind of going off the fly here. Super Handicaps list is number 22 in this list off of the Hodgson website. But it's a pretty fast burn rate powder. Uh, it has, the, you can reproduce a factory load with this is what it says. And that is an ounce and an eighth of shot at 1,250 feet per second. Uh, International, that's another fast burn rate powder. And uh, it is listed at number 23. So they're pr pretty close to each other. Unique from Alliant, that's a fast burn rate powder. It's listed at number 27. And so those are my fast ones. My slower burn rate powders, of course, SR 4756, which they don't make anymore, was a slower burn rated powder. And it's listed as number 37. But for slower burn rate powders, what I mean by slower burn rate, they're gonna burn longer. Sometimes they're the ones that gives you the flash out the barrel, you know, whenever you're, whenever you're shooting. Um, and it, for heavy hunting loads, not target loads, these other powders, you know, these faster burn rate powders, good for target loads. For heavy hunting loads, you're gonna want a slower burn rate powder, uh, depending on the conditions, and we'll get into that. But IMR Blue was was brought out, and they, IMR brought these out in competition with, like IMR Blue's in competition with Blue Dot. There's IMR Red, IMR Green, uh, they're used to IMR Unequal, um, and IMR Target. They kinda compete in that market range with them. Uh, it's a slow burn rated powder. Uh, long shot from Hodgson is a staple for slow burn rate powders. You can get, they have 1530 feet per second ounce and an eighth loads of lead with this, which if you can keep lead patterning at that speed, then uh, you're doing something right. But, and then you have steel. Let me take, talk to you about steel. Steel is a very bulky, elastic powder. It has very big flakes. I'm not gonna dump them out and show you the flakes, but the flakes are big. And it doesn't meter well through the reloader machines, so you need to weigh it. I would have a reloading scale if I was you. And I do here have a scale Mine's from Frankfurt Arsenal. I can't remember where I got it, but this is my scale. I weigh my shot, weigh my powder uh, to make sure my bushings and charge bars are dropping what they're supposed to. And uh, they are, this is a, a great, great powder. If you're loading steel, you better have this on your workbench because the velocities you're gonna get at low pressures are phenomenal. You can get 16, 1700 feet per second steel loads uh, out of this, out of a 12 gauge. And let me tell you, that is smoking fast. Now, the velocity that you're gonna get at, at that velocity, it's gonna be some setback on the shoulder, whichever one you use. But, uh, so there's fast burn rate powders and slow burn rate powders. What about the weather? Well, the weather is something that uh, once you get below 40 degrees, these have, uh, powders have, what do they call that? Uh, natural cellulose for a single base propellant or powder. And your double base powder has nitrocellulose and nitroglycerin. 
Well, at a certain temperature, that is not our freezing level in America's, you know, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, but at like 40 degrees uh, and below, you can start seeing some debris build up in your shotgun barrel. And you may say to yourself, well, um, I thought this was a clean burning powder. Well, it is, but some of your double base powders are gonna leave debris in colder weather. So when it gets really cold, you might find you a hunting load that uses a single base, a faster burning powder, and that will clean up the debris that's in your shotgun barrel if you're hunting in really, really frigid temperatures. Um, so that kind of covers hot weather and cold weather. Um, one thing I want to kind of give you an, a rundown on I don't know, I think I've got it. Here's a box of shells right here. These are some old federal gold metal, solid plastic shell. I didn't cover federals in my hull video, but uh, feel free to do that yourself. Uh, it's not a big deal. But uh, there's something on this box called DRAMS equivalent. Let's see if my camera will focus on it here. There it goes, DRAMS equivalent. What does DRAMS or DROMS, however you want to say it, equivalent mean? Well, back in the black powder days, they measured black powder by DRAMS, uh, and they could use that to let you, that was kind of a, the same as how we measure velocity uh, back in, you know, turn of the 1900s, uh, you know, back before smokeless powder was introduced. So um, that is something homage back to the older days nobody hardly uses those anymore you'll find some people that really use them as far as trying to tell if it's a high powered or low powered load based on velocity uh you know my dad still uses he don't measure things by drams but what he does is he'll say well what's the what's the drams on it and that can that'll tell him if it's a high powered load uh so kind of get yourself familiar with with some of that and uh, it'll help you out in the long run. And once again, if you don't take anything else away from this video, never substitute powders in a load. It is a no-go. You are, mm -mm, you don't wanna do it. Use the powder that it calls for. Um, and, and that's the safest thing that you can do. This has not been a real informative video, maybe, as far as detailed, but this is, uh, this is about as detailed as I'm going to get with it here. Uh, if you like the videos, you know, please like and subscribe to the channel, and we'll keep some coming to you. Um, we are going to get to patterning. We are going to get to... Uh, you know, shooting uh, skeet and things like that later on. I just wanted to get done with this uh, series here and that way we can move on to other things. So anyhow, uh, like, subscribe, comment, let me know what you think. And if you have any questions, shoot me an email at reloader80 at yahoo.com and I'll do the very best I can. Until then, take care.